Hi everyone, I'm Giovanni and today with us Senior Market Analyst Matti Greenspan with the latest market updates. So Matti, can you give us like uh, an update about the last uh, um, events in the market? Yeah, uh, so Bitcoin crossed uh, $10,000 over the weekend, um, even uh, popped its head above $11,000 uh, briefly at two different points. Um, at the moment we've got a nice ascending triangle over here. Um, a lot of momentum right now. And uh, what about other altcoins like Litecoin, uh, Ethereum? Uh, did you see any of these altcoins leading the last rally? Bitcoin is firmly in control of this rally. Uh, it's up about 10% on the week, whereas some of the other altcoins, most of them are around, uh, you know, three, maybe 4%. Uh, you know, uh, NEO is also flying. I don't know about that as 28%, but I wouldn't say that NEO is really leading the market. Uh, definitely all of the focus from the mainstream media and from crypto enthusiasts is around Bitcoin. What's the difference between the current pattern of Bitcoin compared to the one that we observed during the 2017 uh, bubble? Yeah, that is an excellent question, Giovanni. Um, and what I can say is that um, last time Bitcoin rose, to, uh, you know, the first time Bitcoin rose above $10,000 per coin uh, back in late 2017, it was amidst, uh, you know, kind of FOMO driven rally. And what I can say is that this time around, uh, this, you know, $10,000 more reflects the true value and it seems a lot more sustainable given current adoption rates. Um, here we can see the, uh, the transaction rate in Bitcoin. Um, in 2017, it did spike up uh, to about four and a half transactions per second, but it didn't stay there for very long. That was, you know, based on the speculation and hype, uh, there was a big spike in the transaction rate. Actually, what we can see is throughout 2017, so since about January, uh, the transaction rate has been about, uh, has been a, uh, largely remained above three and a half transactions per second. So we can see these days there's a lot more usage of the blockchain uh, and that basically um, contributes to its valuation. We can also look at the level of activity on local Bitcoins, which is a peer-to-peer -peer trading site, um, which also reflects real world usage much more than uh, we would see you know, at exchanges, which is more speculative. Um, and what we'll notice here is that since uh, the, that the overall volume at, at uh, the overall volume at local bitcoins rose above fifty million dollars um, around September two thousand seventeen, uh, which is about here, and it actually has not gone significantly below that since. So, meaning that all that time from then until now, we have a lot more. Uh, a lot more activity on the blockchain. So this is a, a rapidly growing industry. Um, 2017 brought us awareness. Um, it basically, uh, during that time, the entire world was just kind of figuring out what Bitcoin is and what it's all about. And today, uh, ever since then, we have that awareness. And this is basically, this rally is driven uh, by more fundamentals. Can you tell me something about uh, price levels? Uh, yeah, so, Overall, I mean, it's very clear that um, the move above 10,000, which was a strong psycho psychological resistance level, uh, was a big driver. Um, and now we can see very clearly the upward trajectory of this market. So if we start, uh, you know, drawing our support and resistance levels, uh, we'll see that we're just at the top of this channel at the moment. So if we draw our support here along the bottom, uh, and then our resistance here along the top, uh, we can notice that we're uh, quite at the top of this channel, which would, uh, which would normally mean uh, that we could be due for a pullback. If we do see a pullback, uh, we can probably expect that that 10,000 level gets broken again down to the downside, uh, possibly testing that 9,000 level, uh, which was a resistance uh, in, uh, uh, in early June. Um, but it doesn't have to. I mean, right now, like I said, we have an ascending triangle uh, on the short term. We could very well get a break to the upside, so we'll have to wait and see. 
Um, what I do want to note is that that break above 10,000 uh, was happened on strong volume. We can see in Masari crypto, uh, the real 10 across the 10 biggest exchanges is trading at $1.6 billion. That's a big number. That's more than double what it was a week ago, uh, almost triple. So uh, definitely this move is coming with strong volume. Uh, regarding a recent article published by Cointelegraph, in which uh, there are four reasons why this time Bitcoin can break the $20,000 uh, all-time highs. So the reasons uh, included in the article are institutional demand, as opposed to the retail back in 2017, and much better network uh, fundamentals, um, and uh, microeconomic problems within the fiat world. Mm, so do yeah. you agree with this kind of analysis? A hundred percent, I agree. Um, and actually, I'll go you one further. Uh, about a week ago, I posted a poll on my Twitter account. Um, and I, those were the, the four uh, options that I gave to people. Um, so not only are those the main drivers, uh, but we can also see kind of what people are thinking are of those main drivers moving the price more. Uh, so first of all, institutional investors, uh, technicals and momentum, greater adoption, uh, and then the macroeconomic picture. Uh, it seems that most of the respondents on this poll were saying that institutional uh, investment, uh, the speculation that larger players are coming into the market, uh, Facebook, we're talking about Bact, we're talking about Fidelity, uh, we're talking about in Japan, uh, they have Line, which, is, a, which is, uh, set to, is a big messaging app over there, which is set to open their own crypto exchange. Um, so we have a lot of excitement uh, that larger players are about to enter the market. Um, but of, uh, overall, I would say that that article is spot on. Those are, in conjunction, uh, the four main drivers. Thanks a lot, Mati. See you next week. Thank you very much and have an awesome day. And as always, guys, don't forget to subscribe to our channel to get more content on the latest market updates. Hi, guys. As you might know, Cointelegraph has its own merch store. And right now we have a special offer for all our subscribers. Use the promo code HODLERSDIGEST30 to get a 30% discount on anything in our store. But for those of you who want even more, we have an extra special offer. Put what you think Bitcoin's price will be on Monday, July 1st in the comments below. Then on Monday, we'll look at all your answers and whoever's guess is most accurate gets a $50 store credit. Yeah. Cointelegraph. Like, subscribe, and hodl.